Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Released in 1988 and directed by John Carl Beekler and starring Lar Park Lincoln, Kevin Blair, and Kana Hodder as Jason Voorhees, a role he would reprise in three subsequent films. Set years after the events of Jason Lives, the plot follows a psychokinetic teenage girl named Tina who unwittingly releases Jason from his tomb at the bottom of the lake, allowing him to go on another killing spree at Crystal Lake. The New Blood was the very first Friday the 13th film I ever saw, and this film was actually released on my fourth birthday, May 13th, 1988. I remember seeing this on HBO as a little kid back in 89, and I loved it from the first moment I saw it. I thought that Kane Hodder as Jason Voorhees was badass, and every time it would come on HBO, I would watch it over and over again. So needless to say, I have a lot of nostalgia and love for this film, despite its myriad of issues, especially when it comes to the gutting of all of the fans fantastic kills and practical effects by the MPAA. Despite that, I still really enjoy and love The New Blood. When it comes to the positives about The New Blood, I love the Jason versus Carrie idea, where Jason is battling a teenage girl with these psychokinetic powers. And I love the fact that she hasn't quite gotten a hold of being able to control these powers. So it's cool to see it work sometimes and other times she's not able to be powerful enough. But that's part of the fun, is her discovering her telekinesis. And Jason has met his match in this teenage girl. While we're on the topic of Jason, Kane Hodder brings a whole new dimension to the character. Jason looks beefier, he looks pissed, he's so angry. And I love that. He's been at the bottom of that lake for like 10 years. Which, yes, the timeline is completely messed up, but really, that doesn't bother me. I also just love the overall physicality of this Jason. Like dragging that chick out of her tent in her sleeping bag and hitting her against a tree. That takes so much strength and anger, and you see all of that come through in Kane Hodder's performance as Jason. And then there's the look of Jason. Since he's been down in that lake for years and years, he's rotted. You can see his exposed spine, some of the bones on his face exposed, and all of the injuries he sustained in the previous films. But Jason isn't Tina's only adversary. There's Dr. Cruz who threatens Tina and her mother that he's going to take Tina back to the hospital, as well as continually gaslighting her to make her use her telekinetic powers along with, in effect, killing her mother via Jason, which only delayed his inevitable gruesome death. And then Melissa, who's your typical mean girl who gets an ax to the face and it's so satisfying. As for our young victims, I think that they're pretty good. They're not my favorite characters out of the Friday the 13th franchise, but they're serviceable. And the budding romance between Tina and Nick doesn't really work. They don't have any chemistry, but that's not something that takes much away from the film overall. But if there's two things that really take this film down from being great is the cut kills and practical effects by the MPAA, as well as the makeup effects or black thereof of the dad at the very end of the film because the producer didn't want him to look like he was dead and rotting. These two aspects were out of John Carl Beekler's hands, so I can't fault him for that. What does make up for these two shortcomings is that final act and showdown between Jason and Tina. Tina electrocutes him, drops a house on him, headbutts him with a severed head, hangs him, uses his own mask against him when we get to see that bad as Jason makeup uses her telekinesis to throw nails into his face, setting him on fire, and then finally using the power of her telekinesis brings her dad back from the dead to bring Jason back underwater. What a fucking awesome film. For me, Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood gets an add to the collection. 
while it's not my favorite in the franchise, I can't help but love this film. And I can see the amount of love that John Carl Beekler had for the story and the film, and Kane Hodder's performance is legendary. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel even more, get your name in the opening credits along with some other awesome perks. Become a Patreon today. Link is down in the description below. Thank you so much for coming by and I'll see you guys on the next video.